Assalamu alaikum everyone. Hope our Muslim brothers are enjoying this holy month of Ramadan. We wish you all the best. May Allah accept your prayers and may he grant you whatever you pray for. So, uh, Godwin Toko, once again, for all books, Eugene, I am here to review another book. A few days back, I asked on my Twitter handle, at Godwin Toko, which books you are most interested in seeing us review. And um, there was a couple of books. I put seven books out there. And perhaps not surprisingly, this emerged as number one. So just before I get into it, please always leave us your comments. Tell us the kind of books you want us to review. If you have a particular book you're looking out for, let us know. Um, give us some comments on how we can improve this channel so we can make your experience here better. So um, into the subject matter of today, this is the book I am going to review. Uganda's Health Sector Through Turbulent Politics, 1958-2018 by Professor Anthony K. Mbonye. Um, Professor Anthony Kembonye was a former professor uh, um, and lecturer at the, uh, and head of the College of Health Sciences at uh, Makere University and he was formerly acting director general of Uganda's, Medi uh, Uganda's Health Services and the Ministry of Health. So this is a 2018 book. Uh, it's published by a publishing house in the UK, in the UAE, United Arab Emirates, called Farm, Z Farm FZE. So it's a relatively small book from the width, as you can see, and it's very easy to read, uh, printed with, I think, the, one of the best quality papers out there for a Ugandan book. So to get into the content of this book, this book basically is a history book in the one hand, but a history book that looks at Uganda's history as far as the health sector is concerned. Professor Anthony Mboni outdid himself in this one. He, 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 he traced Uganda's history as far as health is concerned. We say health is wealth. And Uganda's health sector has been under scrutiny, especially over the last few uh, weeks and, and days uh, following the, the passing on of the former Speaker of Parliament, um, the former Governor of Bank of Uganda, and a couple of other issues, the complaints about the health sector back at home and how it has been neglected and all that. So this book is a very good starting point. Does our health sector have a history? Yes, it does. Um, and this could be traced back to the time when the Sekabaka Mutesa one wrote to the colonialists, I mean to the, to, 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 the, to the Queen of England and said, send us some missionaries. Now when the missionaries came here with their mission of spreading the word of God, uh, they also came um, and established what became our formal health sector. So Professor Anthony Mbonye uh, uh, traces the history right from that time. He looks at the history of Mulago Hospital. Does Mulago Hospital have a history? He looks at the history of Mengo Hospital, uh, Rubaga Hospital and all those major health sectors in the country during colonial times, how they were established and how they came to be what they are today. And then he moves fast enough and then comes to the period just before independence. So just before independence, the, the, you know, Uganda's independence seemed to have arrived at the point of crisis. There were so many unanswered questions. And not surprisingly, even in the health sector, there was that unanswered question. There were only a, a handful of doctors for a population that was really big and was growing exponentially every other passing year so when the the, the african government took over in 1962 led by um by dr apollo milton they faced that challenge so they tried to patch up things here and there and it shows you how they got in some doctors from abroad they, he had this uh, ambitious plan of building 22 major hospitals across the country um nakaseke hospital was one of them maybe general hospital and a couple of other the, the train, train hall so he, he, he did his best, yeah? He, he tried, he tried his best. But of course, he couldn't, there was only two, so, so, so much he could do within that time. And 1971, there's that coup d'etat by Idi Amin Dada. So even under Idi Amin Dada, despite the many things that have been said about him, he still recognized that health was a major issue. So he worked with the Russians, got us some 100 uh, medical personnel. He continued with Dr. Obote's ambitious plan of completing the hospitals. Yes, by the time of the coup, not all had been completed yet. So he built them here and there, uh, patched up things as well, if I can use that term as I used with Obote. Now, and that we move on until um, Amin himself is overthrown. By the time he's overthrown, the health sector question is still not addressed. So it had actually deteriorated further, according to Professor Mbonye. Now, when Amin is overthrown, there's that brief lapse period of, 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 of Lule, uh, Binaisa, and then Mwanga. Then Obote comes back and uh, Obote comes back onto the onto the crown of the presidency, the number one office. But then there is a war in Wero. That war again now tore the health sector even further. It caused a lot of devastation 
So the question of the health sector remained. And to make matters worse, doctors were being killed en masse. Um, you, prominent doctors were going into exile because of the war and because of the turbulence in the country. Eventually, President Musev, uh, Mr. Museveni by that time becomes the president of Uganda after a protracted gorilla war five years. Now, when he becomes president, the question of health is one of the questions that he faces the most. How do we go about the health sector? So he does whatever he could do. But then, you know, around that time, that's when now the world wakes up to the reality of HIV AIDS, this pandemic that was taking the world by storm, killing so many people. Now, President Museveni, he credits him and says, President Museveni stood up to the challenge and said, let's face this thing. Let's address it. Other countries were denying. For him, he said, no, no, no. Let's, let's say that we have a problem and we address it. So he performed very well compared to other African presidents. When it comes to HIV, the country, Uganda performed really well. So we, we got that score. Then he revamped the, 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 the immunization campaign. He, he, he went a step further and um, they established an organization, the, the um, Uganda Women's Effort to Save Orphans, to take care of the people that had, uh, the orphans who had lost their um, parents because of HIV AIDS. So there was really this great effort, yeah, this effort invested in the health sector and things started looking up again. Now, the gist of this book, and I know that's, that's what aroused most of the interest, apart from health being wealth, like I said at the start, was what he says in the last chapter of this book. In the last chapter of this book, he says, unfortunately, things seem to have gone south along the way. He says, one of the major problems with the health sector in Uganda is that the senior staff members who have been through the system Professor Anthony Mbonye died last year. By the time of his by the time of his death, he had already resigned uh, his position um, with the Ministry of Health. But before he did, he had been there for 30 years. 30 years is such a long time. And that, that's a lot of experience that he must have amassed over the years. Yet he says that people were, like him were being um, uh, overlooked. And then other people were being brought in. And he says it's in a very funny way. He says these people are coming and they are saying that, oops, we pray together, the members of the church. They, they, they would appoint someone the minister and then say, oh, that one is a prophet so and so, a pastor so and so, as if as if the whole health sector was being given into the hands of people based on their religious affiliation. And then he talks about their competence. Says people are being employed, and their competence was questionable. Let me just read what he said about one of the people. Of course, I won't mention the name. He says, at A level, she gained an E in chemistry, B in biology, and a D in physics. In addition, she scored a credit three in general paper and a credit five in sub math. With a total of 12 points, yeah, 12. Thus, it is rather surprising that she was admitted into a medical course with such low grades. So he says that the people that eventually came to take up the position, the, the main senior position that the Ministry of Health, around 2016, 2017, turned out to be people that, according to his own assessment, were not even fit to hold these positions in the first place. Yeah, but of course, you read the book and then find out more of that. You then make your own judgment. But for me, lays out his evidence and shows why he thinks they were not competent, to say the least. And then he says, when they got up, when they got into those offices, then they started all this bickering, there was there this quarreling, uh, so on. The clickism, clicks were formed, clicks based on religion, clicks based on um, things that were otherwise not related to the health sector. Now he says, having seen how these things were going, at some point he decided to pull the plug. So he resigned his position uh, after he was accused of engaging in corruption. Uh, despite being cleared by the IGG's office, that is the Inspectorate of Government, and eventually the Courts of Law. So um, I understand why people wanted this book. I understand the interest in this book. This book is really, really a good book for anyone to read. If, if you want to understand why, for instance, things like COVID, yeah, why our health sector, someone said it, 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 it didn't, COVID didn't break our health sector, it exposed the reality of how limping our health sector was. And this book will answer some of those questions. Um, it, 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 the only problem with this book is it's hard to find. I have tried to find a second copy, my friend, and I just couldn't find it. But I know that there are soft copy, there's a soft copy available. So if you search, if you ask your friends, perhaps someone could be having it and they can share a, soft, a PDF version of it with you. And if that is allowed, then maybe you could, you, you, could, you could read further through the soft copy. But it's a very, very interesting book. So medical practitioners will really want to read this one. Medical students will want to read it. Uh, people who are generally interested in the history of Uganda because... Like the, the title says, he just doesn't look at the health sector in isolation. He looks at it through the politics. So he brings in the political regime at each time and how the existence of that regime affected the medical field in this country. Very good book. I highly recommend this. Please look out for it. Thank you very much. Subscribe to the channel. Like, share with your friends. And leave us a comment on how we can um, improve this channel or which book you want us to review next. God bless you all.